Dude, that's gonna get a face job. Give him some room. According to testimony today, convicted cocaine smuggler John Piazza told investigators that as early as 1974, organized crime figures were planning to use their money and influence to gain control of casinos and businesses here that would service them. Committee staff member William Gallinaro said it was agreed at a meeting at the Forge restaurant in Miami Beach that Piazza would front for Meyer Lansky, Al Malnick, and several others. How many casinos uh, did the group intend for Mr. Piazza to buy? According to Mr. Piazza, they were talking to start off with, those were his words, uh, approximately two or three. How much money was involved, or to be involved? Uh, Twenty to twenty-five million dollars. Where was that to come from? According to Mr. Piazza, it was to come from banks in the Cayman Islands and from Florida banks. Gallinara also quoted Piazza as saying, the mobsters plan to make their biggest money in the casinos by skimming. That's the practice of taking money from the total take before taxes are paid on it. Later in the hearing, Senator Childs said that wherever casinos are operated, organized crime eventually operates them one way or the other. As he put it, who can do it better? After all, it's their ball game. Ike Seamus, Channel 4 News, at the Federal Courthouse. Did he, uh... Did he tell you anything how the skimming was to work? Uh, he went into that briefly. Uh, he said that he was told that the first count was the most important count in the casino. And whatever had to be taken off the top would have to be done at that time on the first count. He said also that uh, during the hours the casino would be operating, uh, he stated approximately every three or four hours they would make a pickup. And one of the pickups would just not appear on the records. Miami Beach movie producer Michael Franchise is behind bars tonight. The reputed mobster was sentenced by a federal judge in Brooklyn today to 10 years in prison. Franchise is also ordered to pay nearly $15 million in fines, forfeiture, and restitution for his conviction on racketeering and tax conspiracy. as forfeiture and restitution in the federal case. Anything else before the court? Well, I've been guaranteed by the states that it's all over, and I'm happy. You think it's been fair? Well, I won't say. I won't comment. What do you think about I think we've saved the state of Florida hundreds of thousands of dollars in expenses that it would have cost to bring him to trial. We've recovered uh, all that we could reasonably expect at this point in restitution and uh, funds to repay Florida taxpayers, and we've imposed a sentence uh, of imprisonment that is equal to what would have happened had he gone to trial. So yes, I'm very satisfied. Franzis will be eligible for parole after serving 40 percent of his sentence, which is just over three and a half years. Although the state is satisfied with the plea bargain, Broward's assistant state attorney says the sentence is not an appropriate one considering the crime. But he says the state is bound by Florida's sentencing guidelines, which he says are, quote, notoriously weak for white-collar crimes. At the Broward County Courthouse, Jerry Cohen, Channel 10 Eyewitness News. On the night beat. The DEA, FBI, and local police swarmed around the Pink Pussycat Club on Northwest 36th Street. It was one of three adult nightclubs called cash factories for the Colombo crime family by investigators. 
The scene was the same at Goldfinger, a strip bar in Broward County, and at Club Diamonds in West Palm Beach. And it was there investigators found their main target. He is 53-year-old Thomas Farisi, who investigators say is the top operative of the New York Colombo crime family's Florida operation. Like the weather, the lure of these late-night cash factories is more than the, the mob can resist. Farisi and his crew are charged with using the strip clubs to launder money they thought was drug money, not knowing the cash was coming from undercover agents. The parent drug dealer goes to nightclub with small bills from selling crack cocaine, gets from Farisi's crew bills of larger denominations, the Farisi crew gets a commission, and in the process, $1.1 million in drug laundering is accomplished. Agents rounded up employees at the clubs for questioning, and records from the bars were taken as evidence. At Goldfinger, the office manager said the government's charges were false. Sure, that it's the furthest from the truth of what we do here at this totally legitimate nightclub. Charged along with Farisi are William Billy Bad Cresta, Frank DeRosa, the owner of the Pink Pussycat, and Ida Fumero, known as Tony. We've laid bare their scheme to launder money, and we have absolutely stripped them of every asset possible. Investigators say the raids represent a significant blow to the Colombo family, but say they are also a sign that organized crime is stepping up its presence here. Today is about winning and losing. Today, the citizens of South Florida won, and we'd like to thank that the bad guys lost. Brad Berkey, Channel 10 Eyewitness News, Daybreak.